been about a quarter past ten. Yeah, that would make the most sense. The second bell for third period had already rung, and the halls were pretty barren by that point. Most of the students were already in their classrooms, working out tedious calculus equations or trying to stay awake long enough to make it through one of Mr. Fingleton's U.S. history lectures. I was supposed to be in English lit. See, there was this big essay due in old Lady Elderman's freshman English class that day, and it was on The Tempest, if memory serves. The assignment was worth 15% of my grade, and I had stayed up all night working on it. It's funny what kinds of details you remember, you know? Ask me what color the lockers were in the hallway, and I couldn't tell you if my life depended on it, but even now, years later, I can still recall the smell soaking the air as I sprinted through the empty corridor. Thick and skunky is how I describe it. The kind of artificial stink that brews in a laboratory somewhere in New Jersey and sold in cheap glass bottles at off-price department stores. I had become familiar with the rotten stench of that particular cologne. It was something I smelled before. There was only one person I knew who bathed himself in that bargain basement toilet water, and even though I didn't see him, I knew he was nearby. In my hand was my essay, rolled up into a paper tube, with my shoelaces untied and my baggy jeans sagging halfway down my scrawny ass. The hall seemed to stretch for miles, and still the air was growing heavier with that musky odor as if I was heading straight to some kind of invisible fog or gag-inducing man stink. I thought I just caught myself on a locker at first. And maybe my oversized t-shirt simply snagged a lock or an open door and I needed to untangle myself and that's when I stopped running. That was a big mistake. A second later I found myself whipped up against the door of an empty classroom. The pugnant smell was stronger than ever and I felt like it was strangling my nostrils. I looked up and realized it hadn't been a locker that snagged me at all, it had been a person. And unfortunately it was the last person I was hoping to run into. Well, second to last. The Hall Monitor. This self-important jackass loved to lord his tiny bit of power over the rest of the student body, and during my first year of high school, I had become one of his favorite targets. He was easily the least like kid I knew. The pimply-faced upperclassmen had been writing me up all year, and his stupid detention slips had even landed me in Saturday school on more than one occasion. I struggled to push him off me, but I was pretty small back then even for a ninth grader. Let's just say puberty hadn't yet blessed me with height and strength on par with most of my peers. He was a senior, already 18 at the time, and while not physically imposing for his age, he had no trouble pinning me up against the door. Running in the halls, huh? That's detention, bud, he said with an arrogant smirk on his face. The hall monitor wrote down my infraction in a little pink notepad. What are you at? Nine detentions for the year? One more, and this school's policy will suspend you. I'd be real careful for the rest of the semester if I were you. The hall monitor eased his hand off my chest, but just as I stepped forward, he shoved me hard back up against the door. Hold on! He eyed me up and down from the end of his hooked beak of a nose. Shouldn't you be in Miss Elderman's English class right now? I don't really remember if I answered him or not. Like I said before, it's funny what you can and can't recall sometimes. What I do remember is the satisfied look on his greasy face when he said, Class is in session, and you can't be in the halls without a pass. Looks like that's detention number 10, freshman. He finally let me off the wall, then kicked me hard in the ass when I began to walk away. Get off the class. I'm going to take these detention slips to Vice Principal Perkins. You can probably expect a call up to his office after lunch. Maybe next time you should think twice before breaking the rules. He laughed to himself and started trotting down the hall in the direction that I had been coming. I went back to running until I had made it out of the front door of my school and across the street. See, up to that point, in my young life, my high school's hall monitor was the biggest asshole I'd ever met. But deep down inside, I wish I could have handled the situation differently. It's one of those things that years later still haunt me when I can't sleep in the middle of the night still pecks away at my memories like a bird with a bloody beak, and I'm left alone with my thoughts. I regret how I handled our confrontation that day. 
and I often find myself wishing I could go back in time and have done it over. If I could, I would have done things differently. I would have stood up to his bullying. I, I would have told him that he didn't scare me or intimidate me, but most of all, I would have told him that the reason I had been running in the first place was because I had seen a gunman head to Vice Principal Perkins' office. <laughs>